Welcome everybody to the Media Gel podcast. Viper with Respect My Region, and I have Anthony Allegretti with Forty Tons. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Great to be here, man. Always. Good to always. see you, Mitch. Good to see you, Gary. Yeah. Out here in Palm Springs, all the flowers, vibing, networking, growing business, big chilling, vibes, laughing, having a good time. Yeah. Well, let's kick it off. Uh, Let's hear a little bit about 40 times and what you got going on. Oh, man, dude, it's been a, a wild ride. You know, we received a uh, a lottery ticket on January 20th, 2021. When Court Vancouver got uh, a presidential clemency. Yeah. Trump, Trump let him out from a nonviolent cannabis offense that he had a life sentence for. So it's really just been crazy since then, you know, building the brand, uh, you know, putting all the pieces to the puzzle together and just making it work, man. So, you know, we're a social impact brand that's dedicated to bringing more diversity and inclusion of BIPOC communities into the cannabis space and providing second chances to those who pass cannabis convictions. And, you know, we can't forget about the 40,000 prisoners still locked up over this. So, you know, we advocate and fight for them as well. Oh, that's, that hits the, that hits the heart right here. You're making an impact. You're, you're on the boots on the ground. Trying to run uh, front lines, changing people's lives. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, you know, we're legacy guys. You know, we we we've been impacted by this this war on cannabis. All of our family members, everyone that's been involved in this company, has had some sort of impact by, you know, the uh, prohibition of cannabis. And so, we want to take a negative and turn it into a positive, and you know, do it authentically, do it cool, do it stylish, you know, and work with others that believe in the same core values as we do. You know, like respect my region. You know what I'm saying? You guys hooked us up with that with a dope article on the podcast last month. And Media Jail's been incredible with your grant you guys just gave me. So gave us. Um, so I'm, I'm forever grateful. Yeah, we're we're happy to have you on, and we want to make an impact. We really want to see this go nationwide, right? Global. Yeah. Right. So it's not only United States that they have this problem, right? So it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so just got to start in our backyard and, and then work our way up. Well, thank you for joining us again. Uh, Mitch, you want to give a little background on Respect My Region? Yeah, you know, uh, I do a lot of these now. I'm trying to, trying to get it refined. I don't have the, you know, the, the pitch down to an elevator, but you know, the, the, the two parts of Respect My Region were a media platform that, that delves in the music, predominantly hip hop space, and then the cannabis space. And then we do a lot of marketing agency work on the back end, again, in music, predominantly hip hop, as well as cannabis. Um, and, you know, similar legacy guy in the cannabis space and, and able to take the hustle legit through a different route than touching the flower or selling through dispensaries um, and just really, really blessed for, you know, the end of prohibition and legalization around this planet. You know, never did I think, you know, back in the day that I'd be able to be conversing about cannabis on cameras and things like that, you know, and, and call that, make, you know, make a living out of that, you know, like back in the day, we were trying to talk about cannabis on text or phones or anything, you know, so... Uh, it's, it's just a crazy time to be alive and, uh, you know, just really here to elevate the culture, tell the stories, connect with the people and, and make sure a piece of this legacy moves in as we go to the inevitable conglomerates and corporatization of cannabis that, you know, the, the stories and the messages penetrate people and we can just keep our, you know, our thumb on the pulse. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's big and you know, we're, we're getting the message out there and you're doing a wonderful job showing people stories taking everything from mainstream, validating everyone, showing their authenticity, right? Yeah, so it's, it's big. Well, and I guess to kick it off, like, how did you get your start in Canvas? Like, what did you... Oh, man. <laughs> let's go back. Let's go way yeah, back. I'm mean, after talking pre-teenage years. Pre-teen, you beat me. Oh, man. Yes. <laughs> I was cleaning. I, uh, <laughs> I was smoking, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, one of the guys that, that I was smoking with, this was in high school, so we had, you remember back then we had those really big uh dub sacks but they were big but it was like a like you know the shitty uh, reggie lead, right but they were big they weren't like the one grams you know uh, so we got that and like it took us all week to sell that uh and we realized well i realized like yeah this ain't really for me little bit i know years later you know we get in the movie for tons of this shit but um that's kind of how i got my start in it and then just was a consumer of it you know being in hip-hop you know growing up in la you know you just around it the vibes the culture um and so that's kind of how i got started 
it's the same story for me. I grew up in Santa Rosa and, you know, I was DJing in the hip hop community and it was just everywhere, right? Like it was part of my DNA. Uh, I was DJing at, you know, started at 15 years old. Probably smoked my first joint at 15, 14, maybe. I remember going to uh, Russian River up there in Stone County. I don't know if you know the area, like Gurnville, Sebastopol, where all the redwood trees are. Oh, That's the first time I really got blazed with my cousins from, nice. San, with my cousins from San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're older cousins out there. Uh, and it's always been in the game sense. I'm just mostly as a consumer. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then in my 30s, uh, a friend of mine, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor in a different year to live. Uh, and she used Rick Simpson oil, she used chemo, plant-based diet, and after that, she, you know, everything kind of just went back. And she, she, beat went, she beat it, and oh, she's wow. with us today, wow. and she's running a cannabis dispensary. Yeah. yeah! So it's full circle. What's her name? Uh, Felicia. Felicia. Felicia, man. Shout out Felicia, man. You, you did your thing, man. We're glad you're here. Yeah, so she she did her thing. That was the, I mean, that was the catalyst for me to like get serious about this. You know, I started to hear all these stories about uh, how cannabis has made an impact on people's lives, not just what we see on the news, but I've seen all types of just phenomenal stories. Uh, when I got into the cannabis space, I was doing yeah, the uh, interviews and everything. Um, that was really just like hit home. Like I, this is my friend. She, you know, I saw the whole thing. How, what she went through and how much it made an in her life, in her family's life, and everyone else. It's just like, man, we gotta, That's I gotta really get, cool. I gotta get this access to everything. It's cool. We can, we can, we can smoke joints. We can chill. We can do all that. But you know, there's also the medical side, and, and it's impactful. Right? It's just it has so much, uh, so much power behind it, and uh, something that's been hidden for all this time. For, you know, certain companies and families want to keep it under wraps. So Absolutely. now it's, uh, it's getting that access to everyone. Man, I'm about to go drop off some uh, CBD to my aunt in Palm Springs, who's 80 something years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's yeah. 80. I know, no sound, right?
sharing and, and, and learning, you know, what, what exists, then doing something about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So thanks for sharing that. You know, thanks for, you know, sharing your, your, your platform. Absolutely. Yeah. We all have our journeys, right? It's, it's, uh, I mean, uh, jump through so many hurdles in cannabis working in this industry. It's like, never stops. Like, you know, what Mike Tyson say, uh, you know, if you have a great plan until you get punched in the face. <laughs> I got punched in the face so many times oh, in this man. industry. Same here. <laughs> face punches that we lose our freedom. Yeah. We yeah. lose our, our livelihood. Yeah. Because everything we, we bought. So this plan means a lot to a lot of us. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's great that, like, it's now coming full circle. Mm-hmm. You know, you had to go through the bullshit to come out the other side. You know, you know eat. I can talk about my past and, and, and you know, going in and out of prison uh, over it, but like, you got people like Corbain, who's, yeah. it's 10x even you know, what I went through, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if people like him, you know, we just got to pay it forward, and, you know, and, and let, let, we're not saying we want to hand out, right? We want to hand up, right? We, we want to let the market dictate, you know, whether or not we survive, right? But it's having access and opportunity. That's where the problem lies. It's, you know, if we make a bunk product and it doesn't sell, that's on us. Yeah. But if we don't even have the tools and the resources and the ability yeah. to get in the game, that's where there's this issue. And so this is why social equity is so important is because it, the lack of access, the lack of resources, systemic racism, all of these things that have been around for the last hundred years has had an impact on what is going on today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if we're going to make generational wealth for many but then have generational displacement for this group of people. Like that's not right. You know? And so we need to speak up and we need to do things to help as well as create brands, create platforms. Yeah. Right. And create commerce. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Forget asking for a seat at the table. We create our own table. Yeah. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, how, how can corporate cannabis, you know, get involved in social impact businesses while being authentic? You know, that's a great question, right? Cause Corporate cannabis, you know, has a stigma to it that, you know, all they, you know, that they're just about money, you know, they don't care. Um, but, you know, I think that there's people at corporate cannabis that do care. Yeah. And, and I think there's people that, you know, that we need to get into yeah. these positions within these corporate companies that can actually help make a change. And I think that the way to do it is, number one, we, they have to they have to truly want to help. Yeah. Like the core value of like really wanting to help and be empathetic. Is, is necessary. You can't just say, oh, here's 10% of proceeds going to this charity um, and now we're social impact. The charity needs the help, but that doesn't make you, the company, social impact. Like, what are you doing to actually fund some of these programs? What are you guys doing to lend resources, tools? If you don't want to write a check, what about giving access to your platform? Yeah. Right. And so these, I think, are ways that corporate cannabis can help and really sitting down with business owners. Um, like 40 tons, you know, like many of the other social uh, equity companies out there and asking them, what is it that they need? Because is funding isn't always the answer. Yeah. I mean, it is a, a major part of the answer, but it's, it's access. It's, you know, distribution. It's, it's manufacturing. Yeah. It's marketing. Yeah. Right. We can have the best product in the world. If we don't got no way to sell it, yeah. no way to amplify the message. How do we do it? So I think, Corporate cannabis needs to, you know, really have these authentic conversations with the smaller brands and the smaller uh, equity companies and really find out what it is that they need and then provide that support. Right. Now, let's talk about the flip coin. That's not profitable. Right. For every dollar that they spend, you know, on something like that, it's less dollars in their pockets. Right. And as a business and a corporation. What's the number one rule to a corporation? Yeah, take care of your shareholders. Make money, yeah. right? Take yeah. care of shareholders. So how do you do it? So that's a conundrum, right? Well, enter 40 tons. Enter brands like us that create a way to monetize mm-hmm. social impact, yeah. right? So that the, 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 the impact that we have pays for itself, right? You, utilizing unique ways to, to, to make commerce. It's not just a simple donation. Right. So figuring out those creative ways to monetize to then take that money and then use it for social good. And I think that is how we can win 
And that's how you can sustain, right? right. So we make less on the individual unit, but we sell a whole lot more of them because people want to buy into the story. They want to buy into the brand. And so that's how corporate cannabis, sorry if that was long-winded. No, no, that's great. But I mean, it's, you got to tell that story, right? People, people don't buy the product all the 100% the product, it's the brand, it's the vision, it's the values, everything that comes along with that, right? It's, yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta pair both. Yeah. You know, you gotta have good product and you have a good, you have a good story and you have to have like good intentions. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's all about intention and if, if, if you're just good people and you're a good brand, like people will gravitate to that. We all make mistakes. Yeah. You know, we all learn the trials and tribulations of commerce, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, this industry is, hyper regulated yeah. there's no money in it. uncle sam has his hand in every pocket at every level of government yeah not to mention w2 you know as outside of cannabis yeah. right that's an extra 30 percent onto your bottom line it's it, you know the supply chain's crazy you know you go to the store you buy a thing of jiffy peanut butter it's the same mm -hmm. yeah. it's not the same in cannabis <laughs> so how do you scale that you know, so these are all just, you know, crazy questions and, and answers that, you know, that we're all trying to just figure out um, and do it in our own unique way. Dude, as a, as a marathon runner, I don't know how difficult this uh, this race would be. You know, all the hurdles that we have to jump through that no one else has to jump through. It's uh, <laughs> it's a marathon. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's 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 what it all boils down to, like. You know, I, 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 I'm not against corporate cannabis. I, I, you know, if it wasn't for corporate cannabis, we wouldn't even be where we're at. Like you need the money guys, you need the funding, you need people to build the, or the, um, the industry. But I just think that there's certain moves that corporate cannabis can make that can actually have a solid impact. And I'm starting to meet a lot of people that work for these companies that really do care. Yeah. Yeah. You do. And like who outside the cannabis industry would you use as a as a case study or a good uh, you know mentor from what you can actually do and make an impact in, in social? Hmm. Um, that's a great question, actually. Um, I mean, Ben and Jerry's does a pretty good job at ben and Jerry's, you know, at, at, at social impact. Um, you know, you we were talking earlier about Nike. I think Nike does a great job at at least amplifying the messages yeah. Yeah. Um, of those that have been impacted. But as far as like on a business tip um, that's outside of cannabis, that's a good one. Um, what about Tom? Tom the, the, <laughs> the OG in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Blake Mykowski starts something yeah. that matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it's about. It's about starting something that matters, right? And then when you start something that matters, you know, we, it, 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 it turns into this avalanche of, of, uh, amazingness for lack of a better word and that's what tom's did yeah. for every shoe he made or got purchased he gave a shoe to someone that didn't have one yeah right because he cared yeah. and then what happened it turned into this massive huge company was it profitable for him in the beginning heck no for every one unit you got to give away two that's a 50 percent cut yeah right you know what i'm saying if you if you cut anything 50 percent, it's not gonna work you know so but it did yeah. Right. So it shows that if you start something that matters, it can have a real impact. Basically. People get behind it. Yeah. The consumer, yeah. right? Like when you're buying something, A, you like it, it's comfortable, but you know, like this is truly helpful. Like I'm, I'm also doing my part buying a pair of sneakers. I would have bought a pair of sneakers for this price anyways, but there's, there's also this social contribution, right? You feel as, you know, not everyone, but that, that ideal consumer feels something about that. I think that since we move into this new generation of the conscious consumer, of they care where their dollar goes to some extent. Um, you know, it's 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 a great thing to be a part of a business for the business to do something that, like you said, actually matters. But then the consumer connects an emotion to the brand, mm -hmm. to the purchase, which is ultimately what we identify with brands, whether it's because of the athlete they sponsor or whatever. And so but it's a little bit deeper connection. So I think, I think that type of model is great. And like what you guys are talking about at 40 tons is, you know, not just, not just a donation, right. But doing something that actually has some sustenance behind it. I think that's really, right. really a key point. Help me build a website, right. Yeah. Help me with my packaging, help me with something. And, and in a way we're like, it's not just you giving it for free. Like, you know, you're giving, you're giving us um, a, a, a runway. Yeah. Right. The guy that helps you with my website, to make a two-page website, I'll buy a website from him 
six months down the line when I've made money and I go back to that same guy who helped me originally and we continue to pay it forward. And that's how you win. That's how we won in the game. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? When everybody eats is when everybody wins. Mm. And I think that just corporate business has this mentality of me, 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 and only us eat. And when that happens, you get famine. Mm. Right. So mm. when everyone eats, we all win. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anyone up in Washington that you would like to highlight that's doing a great job on this mm-hmm. cannabis or outside the industry? You know, it's it's difficult. I was just telling him, you know, him right before we started, like Washington really did a terrible job from a regulatory standpoint. Like we're just now having the social equity conversation mm-hmm. because it's a mainstream conversation yeah. seven yeah. years or whatever into our program. And I think without it being a mainstream conversation, they, it wouldn't even happen in our state. And so I think that's ultimately just a travesty in itself and it's um but there's some guys out there you know like like the bakery is a dispensary out there that has done a great job of just hiring and and they and beyond just hiring you know people of color and from the culture like they really do a good job of training their employees and and providing them opportunities to grow like hey we want to get you so good that you can take a job that we can't even give you right we want you if you are interested in building in this industry like we'll give you the keys. And I think they've done a great job and just who they have sponsored, you know, from shows and the music community. And like, they've really put their dollars into the community really strategically. The, the reef is another story work out there. They're, they're definitely investing in like the arts and music culture, which is uh, in Seattle is very diverse. You know, that's, that's about the diversity in Seattle comes from the art and, and music culture really. Um, and so there's definitely some people like that that have, have really got, you know, packs and weed maps are corporate, but they've invested in our local culture up there. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot of Hollingsworth company. They're not necessarily social equity, but they're like a, a black owned company in Washington, which is, you know, which I know is a small minority in cannabis in general, but Washington very, very specifically. Um, Emerald Leaves, I think it's the only 100% black owned store in like the Seattle Tacoma metro area. You put two big cities together, it's the only 100% owned. Shout out Dwayne over there. Um, you probably saw, you know, Sean Kemp's store came out with this marketing. Uh, it's the first black owned in Seattle. He owns like less than 5%. It was all the marketing. It was yeah. terrible, terrible uh, fumble <laughs> on them trying to, to piggyback off this social movement that's happened over the last two years. You know, that, that's you know, Sean can't get your money. We want to support you. But the other guys behind that, they know who they are. Like that, that was bad use of, yeah. of look at us for social equity when it wasn't social equity. You know, it was a marketing yeah. ploy. Um, and so there's definitely some people as, as a collective, it's not having it, but there's some people out there doing it. And, I, and I'll also say that it's, it's really been nice to start having more conversations where I think the individuals within the industry, whether it's us and our platform or people like the bakery or people like that, where they're, doing what they can with their platform to provide it they might not be able to grant licenses or give out crazy money or funding but they're like playing their role where our regulatory body is continually fumbled the rock you know what i mean like the people the community is what's providing it not not social equity within the industry itself yeah um i got a couple you know brands and organizations that i'd love to you know, give a shout out to that are doing some great things. I mean, let's talk about, you know, the advocacy people, right? The advocacy people are the ones that are on the front lines pushing us, you know, your, your freedom grow forever is your Sherry Sicards, you know, your life for pots can do clemencies. These are one of the first uh, groups of people that were standing outside of the white house, pushing the freedom prisoner movement. Right. Um, Then it evolved into um, more organizations and you got uh, companies like Marijuana Matters DC, shout out Khadija out there. She's doing wonderful things in bringing equity and entrepreneurship to folks in the cannabis space. Um, you got Last Prisoner Project, um, you know, with their, uh, you know, freeing the 40,000 prisoners movement and doing what they can to support. You have uh, Minorities for Medical Marijuana, Project Mission Green, right? Shout out Weldon Angelos at Project Mission Green. Um, some of the good folks out on the east coast is uh, urban aroma urban aroma is doing some wonderful things um out on the east coast that um uh you know they're that are that are having that is having not just an impact in the business side of um cannabis but also on the advocacy so they just did a recent partnership with um project mission green to uh uh help the cannabis prisoners with money on their books Right. So there's like we got to give a shout out to like the people that are doing the advocacy. Right. And there's so many more than that. It's not just those groups like forgive me for not naming all of them. Um, Us, 
yeah. right? With our Can I Get a Second Chance yeah. Cannabis Career Fairs that we're doing now that we partnered with Brand Resumes uh, and the Freedom Unit with and, you know, providing that access, opportunity, education and bringing it all together, yeah. you know? And so, you know, I definitely want to shout out, you know, the people on uh, the advocacy side of the uh, cannabis. Yeah, on the front lines, yeah. taking action. Yeah, just, just, you know, there's so many good brands and companies out there. Like, that's what I love about cannabis is like, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a industry that's for the people by the people. And of course you have, you know, corporate cannabis or you have, you know, the people that make cannabis not so great. Um, but the great thing about this industry, it's like, it's one of the last industries. It's one of the last frontiers where like the people, the legacy mm -hmm. still can like control the industry. You know what I mean? And so we can't let go of that, yes. right? We can't give that, that, that access up. We got to remain diligent. Um, and, um, and own this industry. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Mitch, I have a question related to music. Like, how would you see uh, the, the, the music and cannabis evolving as uh, regulations and everything are kind of loosened and brands have the op opportunity to be creative with how they reach consumers directly? You know, as, as regulations ease up, and I think brands are like less frightened for losing their license for like, you know, putting their name on something they're not supposed to. Uh, it just opens more opportunities. You, you know, music and cannabis, like we said, that they really go hand in hand. And, um, you know, with these live events that they're doing, you know, up in NorCal, um, outside like outside lands, lands yeah. and some of those things, providing like actual dispensaries and consumption lounges on site paired with the beer garden. You know, like in Washington, we have the Gorge, you know, every yeah. music genre plays there, but, you know, they do big country music thing. And it's like, people get wasted like rvs get caught on fire like you know when they when it, it gets really wild you know with, with alcohol and it's like as someone that throws events when you throw an event where there's no alcohol and cannabis like you don't have any of those like none of the issues all of the issues of nightlife and like live events is alcohol. Like, they're gone yeah they're all <laughs> alcohol fueled right and so as people start to wise up it's like I think we can have safer events right you're gonna have less issues with violence you're gonna have less issues with you know, with, with, you know, the, the downside of like the predatory men with, you know, women like that, a lot of this yeah. stuff, like I, I will say it's alcohol is this, the, the, the main, the root cause, but it's the accelerator for a lot of these it's issues, true. right? Whereas cannabis does not accelerate situations like that, you know, accelerates it more like, yeah, yeah. It connects us, right. It's it like important. connects us into the vibe, more conscious of the earth, you know, if you want to say that way, you know, and so um i think it provides a lot of, i think if you know from safety and standpoint i think it opens up a lot of stuff but from brands it's like being able to connect and, and associate people like like we said people connect with products and brands because there's something there you know maybe it's price right but a lot of times oh it's a, it's conscious i'm spending my dollar where i want or oh lebron james is aligned with this company or whatever but then if you add in experiences right i was at this music festival the vibes are so incredible and i was you know partaking in this joint and then this crazy light show came out with this logo entwined right and you just like connect with this brand through this experience for you sure know, like, for sure like it just opens up opportunities like that to to really connect and take the shit mainstream right yeah. like as as we normalize cannabis we help break the stigma which ultimately allows more mainstream conversations where brands can if they so choose can enter in you know enter in or revolve around that conversation so i think it it opens up a lot, you know, beyond the the celebrity branded products like, you know, that stuff is, you know, I don't know, it's, it's played out, it's oversaturated to an extent in a lot of extents. But when you add in those meaningful experiences, that's where I think you get these deep connections with folks. You know what I think? Why it, it, it now that I think about it, why alcohol is is the, is the accelerator of these issues whereas cannabis is the decelerator because at these big massive events at any event there's always machismo there's always you know you're trying to be hard and cool and this and who's bigger than the other you bumped into this person right and so then alcohol will accelerate that well you don't go around sharing your alcoholic beverage with people but with we you pass the joint so it's communal so just the act of like me giving you something is a gesture of like kindness Wow. Right. So I think like subconsciously we, we, because that's happening, it, it, it calms things, you know what I mean? So taking that and infusing that into mainstream music and festivals and, 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 and uh, live events and, you know, 
being able to consume the plant in public and out at you know different different events um, is only going to make all of those industries better. Yeah. It's going to create more commerce. It's going to create more peace. It's going to create more communalism. That's a word. Um, it's going to. It's just going to create more positivity, right? And so, I mean, I don't know why we ain't did this yet. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, right. it's 2021. You know what I mean? It's time to go. Like, go to some places in New York. Have you gone to like some places in New York, like small spots, like clubs or you know, art galleries where they're smoking and they're like having a good old time? Like, they're bomb. Yeah, like it's great. I, I just went to one in New York um, a couple months ago at um, at the Legacy. Mm. Um, you know, the Legacy was fire event, right? Um, what was the other one? Gifted, Gifted BK in yeah. Brooklyn is another uh, spot that we do events at in uh, in New York. That's consumption bomb, super peaceful art, hip hop, you know, the whole nine yards. You know, so I'm happy that we're moving in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, I have experience just here in Palm Springs, like, you know, being in Coachella Valley, going to uh, Coachella, going to Stagecoach, seeing everything firsthand, talking to security. Uh, you know, at Stagecoach is a country festival, and they said it's way more dangerous at Stagecoach than, uh, yeah. you know, Coachella, just because everyone's drinking whiskey and aggressive, and then, you know, when it's 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, people start fighting. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues and I, I mean I've seen it firsthand yeah uh, and then you know Coachella people will be drinking too but they're probably doing other stuff to uh, well, to look, elevate themselves look at EDC <laughs> right EDC Electric Daisy Carnival right that's yeah. a massive festival now I'm not advocating for this but I'm making a point there's really not that much alcohol there it's it's like ecstasy and like other types of of, yeah. of, of of drugs. And I'm not advocating to doing that, but my point is, is the removal of alcohol, right? Creates peace. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you would think from just like a, a regulatory standpoint and a safety standpoint that cannabis would have more um, acceptance. Yeah. yeah. This, this stigma just, you know, right? Like any any event, any sporting yeah. event where there's families, not only is there alcohol served there at a ridiculous price, <laughs> there is banners and videos. You know, the, the where's the hat game at the baseball stadium is sponsored by Bud Light. The kids are play, you know, trying to figure out, right? The little boat race games or whatever they've been doing at sports games, like all that is sponsored by alcohol. Any yeah. Super Bowl, any family friendly thing, alcohol, 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 alcohol. And when you talk to cannabis, still in the, you know, and, and nobody bats an eye. When we talk about cannabis in the mainstream outside of the echo chamber of our industry, it's like, uh, and it's like, talk to the security guards of these festivals. What, what are the differences between alcohol event and cannabis event? Go to a cannabis event and then go to an alcohol based, you know, not an alcohol, just any event that is cannabis. Yeah. And like, yeah. compare your experiences, yeah. you know, look at the, the cleanliness of the bathroom. Like, it's just glaringly, you know, to us that have been on both sides. It's like yeah. dude, the stigma that you guys are putting on this cannabis, like it's so the other way. It's insane. And, and who uh, a country that's leading the way in this is Germany. They actually limited advertising for alcohol, and now they're allowing cannabis advertising mainstream. So they're oh, doing sorry. the. They're doing the. They're on the grounds. They're the ones. You know, they're making an impact fast, and I think they're one of the next ones that are going to. You know, go recreational here in the next year or two. Oh, that'll uh, be great. But they're they're ahead of the game. You know, they're already living in this. They know the impact of alcohol on their community. They care about their their people, right? And you know, that's why they're 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 moving in this direction. The ones that can this way. Shout out Germany for that one. Yeah. So, um, you know, just personally going to experiences like I've I've, I've never had an issue at a cannabis event, whereas I have had when you know yeah. issues you know with, with with alcohol and i'm not like shitting on alcohol like that but what i am trying to do is push the cannabis right forward you know what i mean you would think um we wouldn't have these issues but you know just like any prohibitionary period you're going to go through these periods of, of of pushback right and so we're just in the beginning stages i mean alcohol had this problem yeah. you know when they first got 20s yeah, yeah but the problem with alcohol is, is that when they when they when they remade it legal they only gave licenses to like four or five of the top families. Yep. So they had a monopoly on alcohol for 50, 60 years before craft beer and you know craft alcohol came into the play, mm -hmm. right? It's not like that with cannabis. We got to own cannabis, right. you know what I mean? Where Washington got it wrong 
um, as you as you had mentioned, where California has its challenges. We have New York and New Jersey and some of the new states that are coming online that actually can make that shift, right? You know, half the licenses in New Jersey have to go to equity, equity yeah. right? Things like that. Um, legacy, right? Shout out Happy Monkey, who's doing some great things in, yeah. in, in terms of events and, oh, yeah. and consumption and things like that, right? And keeping the culture with companies like that, you know? So it's uh, it's different, man. And I'm, I'm just... I'm just right here for the ride, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for the ride. I'm here to help out. I'm here to, you know, bring my small level of, you know, um, you know, impact to this, to this, to this space, and just, you know, do good business. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm seeing it right now. I'm living it. I, I feel it when I'm talking to you here. You know, you're making an impact on on people's lives and giving them the the opportunity, right? The education, tools, the everything. Tools you need and to, resources. Just get started. Let's let's go, man. Let's no go. No more excuses. No more excuses, man. Let's go out to Puerto Rico and see you. Yeah. Man, and, and, and get it cracking out there. You know yeah. what I mean? And and and, uh, and and you know, just yeah, man. That's what it's about, man. It's about just doing good business, man. When you look someone in the eyes, you shake their hands, you tell them you're gonna do something, you do it. You know what I mean? And if you don't, you take ownership you, that you made the mistake and, and and you've rectified things. And I think if you have those kinds of core values to your brand, yeah, you're gonna win. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, you know, as long as, you know, regulatory doesn't just, you know, crush you, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, let the market dictate who you are. But I'm going to keep saying access. We need access. Right. Well, we covered a lot tonight, gentlemen. Anything else you want to you want to touch on that's uh, a topic, you know, topic close to your heart? Oh, man. I just think, uh, you know, I think on the, on the topic of social equity and this regulation, I think, you know, the, the East Coast, like you mentioned, some of these states, I, I really applaud them for a couple of the activists have really pushed that, you know, we can't we can't talk about legalization without talking to equity. Right. Whereas like Washington, very much being one of the first states to get adult use like their 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 methodology and a lot of things like we don't have homegrown Washington. We don't have delivery. Um, I don't, I don't think either of those are either talking points, seven years in the game, right? And when you still talk about access and equity, even just around consuming the plant, home grow is, is essential, right? Like, why can't I grow a couple plants at home? You know, it just is, it blows my mind that that's not legal. And so I think, but I went on a slight, slight tangent, but they, they were like, let's push through legalization just because we want it and let's change the other stuff later. And I mean, as we all know, like changing legislation is a long, <laughs> expensive, process and at the end of that road it's not like you're awarded money for your efforts you know or you know so it's 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 really out of a passion right so that's a, like a big salute to everyone that does advocacy and activism because it's a very selfless use of time and resources a very very selfless thing which i have a lot of respect for but i think states out there and companies out there need to be cognizant of we can't have one and address the other you know that it needs to they need to happen at the same time because it's that important because you look at washington we're going to have social equity but we're going to give out licenses eight years in the game and i was telling right before you start is one of the most competitive markets in the country we don't have mso's presco those guys they're not coming to washington they don't want to compete in a small craft market they'd rather go to a new market where they can buy their way into regular regulations that uh, benefit their business model no no disrespect them you know but it's, it's big business right but it's that's where we partner with yeah, those people to, yeah. you know, we get in. Yeah. And so I, I think just having that conversation, playing that role and for companies out there that want to do stuff, reach out to these organizations, just ask questions and don't ask, don't be afraid to, cause you start a conversation with someone you're guilted into giving them money or working with them, but just have these conversations. You know, I know Diligence. you guys, yeah. you guys last prisoner, of any of these guys are more than happy to just share this is what's going on. This is what we're doing. These are ways you can help. I mean, you even use this platform to shout out other groups, right? Like, I think it's just important to start asking. If you don't know, ask the question. And if you have this inclination to do something, do something, you know, start taking That's action. Right. You know? Yeah. So. I, I think it's changing, man. And I'm, I'm seeing some of these MSOs. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the bigger companies. They're reaching out. They're trying. I mean, Cure Leaf has a really great thing that they're that they're implementing. Um who was it? They just interviewed Corbain and L'Oreal for something. It was um, a Canada-based company. I forgot what it was, but they 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 paid them to interview them just to hear their story because mm. they wanted to learn more about like what what the what's happening on the ground. Mm. You know what I mean? So they're trying. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's where we come in. We as an us, um, 
to bridge, become a bridge. Yeah. Right. So then that way, you know, we, 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 we can, we can grow this thing. Right. You know, so great points that you're making, um, you know, hopefully, you know, this comes out before, uh, uh, our, our next big event, but I'd love to give a, a shameless yeah, plug to our, uh, to our event, but February 17th, 2022, we're doing the can get a second chance career fair at Hawthorne. We got another one in Oakland on March 24th. And, um, We'll be in New York, New Jersey in June of 2022. So, man, make sure you support 40tons.co, um, support equity brands, support 87 months. Shout out Evelyn LaChapelle. She did 87 months over this plant. And all she did was deposit cannabis proceeds. Um, you know, so we want to support brands like hers. And um, shout out Urban Aroma. Shout out Method 7. We got, we, oh, I, that's what I wanted to tell you. Tiff. We got some cultivation glasses coming out with Method 7. Okay. Fire glasses. All right. So these are glasses. They're like high end Oakleys for, you know, a comparison. And we partnered with Method 7 and we're coming out with our, with our own set of 40 tons cultivator and pilot glasses. And so it was dope, man. I cold called them. Literally, this is a case in point of hitting up a corporate company. I cold called them on Instagram. I said, Hey guys, do you guys do things for like the community? And are you into like, you know, do you believe that no one should serve a life sentence? over a cannabis yeah. plant of course they're going to say yes <laughs> right so you get them to say yes right rhetorical questions so, you know what i'm saying <laughs> so if you believe that okay great well how would you like to uh you know mm -hmm. work with a, a community brand they go sure what are you talking about like a donation i said no i had something else in mind um can i get your email and let's set up a zoom call so i did i said uh, i said well um reset it up put the pitch together you guys are a glasses company you sell to pilots and cultivators right they're pilots when you're flying forty thousand feet in the air it's the you know the, the sun yep. and then you know the led lights and yep. so when well, you guys are called method seven we're called 40 tons how would you like to come out with a line of glasses called the 747 Ooh. they loved it loved oh, it yeah right they loved it yeah. but instead of 747 it's 747 mm. right um, and have that impact um, helping to get cannabis prisoners out of jail and bringing more diversity into the space with our stuff. Oh, man. They love it. They're, oh, they're, being, they're being made right now. Italian frames, German Zeiss lenses. Um, and so we'll have those out custom. One of, uh, excuse me, um, certificate of authenticity is like one of 500, two of 500 like that. Um, and that'll be out in like the end of Q1, early Q2 of next year. Uh, so I wanted to shout you guys out, man, because yeah. you guys always show love, man. You know, that's far. So, that's far. You know, yeah. And then just go to our site, go to our Instagram. We're partnered with so many different dope brands. We just got a huge grant from Media Gel, forty thousand dollars in digital marketing. That's priceless. This is how you help equity and impact brands by providing resources and tools, and not just the forty grant, but actually the backend platform on how to get with all these publishers and all of that. And that's what um, media gel is providing for us. So thank you, man. Yeah, like, always. It's mad. We're going to knock mad, out of the park. Mad love for that, man. Like I know you're modest about it, but this is the president of the media gel foundation that we're sitting with here, you know, and it's, um, it's priceless what they're doing for us. So, man, I just want to shout everyone out, man. Get it going. Yeah. Man. You know what I mean? Got my boy Divine in the building, and we'll, we'll have another uh, yeah. podcast on Grammy nominated artists. So, you know, we're 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 just we're happy, man. Hall of Flowers, twenty twenty one, Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah, Violet. Cool, Violet. Mitch. Disrespectmerger.com, man. Stay stay in tune with the content. You know, uh, all the all the social media, all the podcast. You know, I don't even fucking know all the shout all out the Joey from now, R &R. But, you know what I'm just saying? Google them. Yeah, Google them. Yeah, yeah, check out Respect My Region. Uh, you know, companies that that, that want to work, that, you know, amplify their story or got a good story to tell. You know, we're here. Um, you know, we want to just keep keep doing what we're doing. I got you, man. Share, share the news. Keep, I'm about keep, to send a gang of people your way, Yeah, bro. keep the culture yeah. alive and, uh, you know, help people, you know, play our part in helping people navigate these waters. You know, we're trying to navigate them ourselves. Yeah. Tell that story. Showcase that. Showcase the story, the journey. Yeah. And, it's been important for us, you know, pre pre cannabis and or pre cannabis being legal and music, you know, it was always about 
although we're not like a music artist, a lot of what we do, I associate because I come from that as the, as the plight of an independent musician of trying to get on, right? I view very, I did that before I did this brand. I, they're very similar. And so independent I've, game. I've always been very passionate of just sharing my time or sharing what I've learned, the, especially the mistakes I've learned to hopefully, you know, save someone from losing that money or that time. Um, and so just we're real passionate about just, you know, sharing, sharing game information, whatever resources, you know, it's uh, if people out there are hungry and, and willing to learn and, and want to do this shit like, you know, let's we, go. We talk their ear off about that shit. So, man, yeah. shout out RMR. Shout out Joey over there. Shout out Mitch. Good folks, man. So, um, man, let's let's get it, man. Smooth seas don't make skillful sailors. And the journey is the reward. Mm -hmm. On that note, mic drop. <laughs> mic drop over here with Anthony. Uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. Media Gel, respect my region, 40 tons, all making moves 2022, making an impact. And we're just going to take this in the room. Hell yeah, to the clouds. Yes, tonight. <laughs> yes.